Okay, so this is the first review for our first midterm. Really, it's like a tri-term. You will have three exams this term, and uh, this first one is for lectures one through five. Okay, um, so we, we kind of started out talking about what, um, what we needed to look at and stuff, and a lot of people are, are seem to have a lot of issues with exponents and roots, so we're kind of going there first. Um, what I have up here is um, just a little problem. Let me go ahead and erase it. I'm going to go through it one more time with you guys. It shouldn't take but a sec. So um, the deal is how when an exponent is, has a lot of symbols that it's attached to, you know, what counts for the exponent? What goes along for the ride? Important thing to remember there, rule of thumb, exponent applies to whatever symbol it is directly attached to. So here, b to the n. The n is attached only to the b, so that's what it applies to. So b is getting repeated n times. If I have something like this, however, let's see. If I have the opposite and I put a b in parentheses to the n, okay, again, now n is attached to parentheses, so whatever's in parentheses that is the negative here is going to be carried down and whatever's in parentheses will be repeated in times. Okay, with that on the brain, let's kind of look at this first problem here, okay? And so is the is negative 3 to the fourth power equivalent to the opposite of 3 to the fourth power? Okay, well, let's figure it out. Let's kind of take them one by one and we'll take a look. Okay, so let's look at this one first, okay? So I'm going to rewrite the problem. Be sure if you're rewriting problems on your paper or whatever your scratch work is, make sure when you transcribe you do that correctly. Double check your work. A lot of people will miss problems just for copying problems down wrong. So be very careful with that. Now, what's happening here is 4 is directly attached to a set of parentheses. So whatever is in the set of parentheses is going to be repeated four times with multiplication, right? So negative 3 is the negatives included in the 3. So negative 3, negative 3, negative 3, negative 3, four times, right? Right, because an exponent tells the multiplication how many times it needs to repeat multiplication. Okay. And so just a quick way to do this, I can I can only multiply two things at a time. So here, negative 3 times negative 3 would give me positive 9. It's all multiplied, right? Negative 3, negative 3, positive 9. So lo and behold, I have what? I have a positive 81. Okay. So I'm um, going to get rid of the 9s now. Just That was just for quick scratch work. So we got a positive 81. Most of you kind of know that when you are raising a negative number to an even number, an even number, right, then you are going to get a positive outcome, okay? So that's something to remember too. Okay, but let's look at this other problem. Let's stick to this one, and I'll give you an example of that idea in a minute. But let's look at this one, the opposite of 3 to the 4th power. It's a little different, okay? It looks a little bit different. I'm going to make it a little bit different color. So the opposite of 3 to the 4th power. So for this one, though, 3, excuse me, 4 is attached, the exponent is attached directly to the 3, not parentheses or anything else, but the 3. So whatever it's attached to, that's the only thing that gets repeated. Okay? So what happens with the negative it would be as though we're bringing it down. You're just going to carry it over to the next step, okay? All right, so it's not going to be repeated. In other words, the 3 is the only thing that will be written four times in multiplication, right? So this guy does kind of just get carried down to the very end, okay? Now, 3 to the 4th power, we said it was 81. So oddly enough, this does look strange, but... But once you realize that little thing, this little idea of whatever it's attached to is what carries out in the multiplication, then it makes a lot of sense. Okay, 
So, of course, if we have, I'll give you one more. If we have this example, let's do um, negative 2 cubed, okay, or to the third power. 3 is attached to the parentheses, so negative 2. And I, I told you I'd give you one where there's a negative being raised to an odd number. Okay, so what is that? This is going to be what? Positive 4 times negative 2, negative 8. So lo and behold, when I'm raising a negative number to an even exponent, like over here in the first problem, like this guy here, I got that positive outcome when I'm raising a negative number to an odd number, and the negatives included of the exponent, right? I do get a negative outcome, all right? But always be aware, be aware of what exactly the exponent is being applied to in the first place, okay? Let's go look at some of these other problems down here, some of these simplify problems. Okay, and these might look familiar. Some of these were assigned to you in homework. Jose, you there? You with me? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Do you have any favorites? I think we were talking about A earlier, and you're on camera, by the way. You're going to be recorded. Yeah. If that's all right. Hello, class. Hi. <laughs> okay, so look, I have the zero here being applied only to what? X, right? So anything raised to the X power, anything, excuse me, raised to the zero power is one. Okay, hopefully you guys are realizing that. Let's have x not equal to 0, though. That would not be even defined. Yeah. Okay, we're just going to assume, though, unless it says something that it's not 0, okay, or that, that those restrictions are going to be okay. So this would be 6. Okay, so um, let's look at b. All right. I guess, let's see, I think I had assigned you guys a, c, and e on, was it a, c, and e? Or was it A, B, and C? Oh, it was A, B, and C. I'm going to do... Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, it was those. You're going to have... So you'll have B in the key, and you'll have this one in the key. I'm going to do the, the, the three at the bottom then for the review. So you guys will have a solution key with these in by morning, really. Okay? Is that good? Unless you wanted to see one right now, Jose, let me know. Uh, no, it's fine. I can wait. Good. We can do the bottom one if you want. Okay, cool. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at those. Um, and this is a good time to remind everybody that I assign you guys a lot of home. Uh, I mean, not that I assign. I don't assign you a lot of homework. But I do have a certain amount I can assign you. But you have a lot of leftover practice. That's perfect to review for your exams and your tests. So... Man, go backwards, start with number one, and work your way up in every section that's on that test. You cannot go wrong if you do that. I'm telling you, you know, at least work up to the problems that were assigned, including the area around those. And you'll, you'll do a great review if you do that. Okay, so let's take a look here. All right, so what we want to do is we want to kind of look and see. We have this two squared. You know, we can clear little things like that up as we go along. But this 3 out on the parentheses is being applied to everything in the parentheses, like we just spoke about. So when you have this, there's a rule that you were given that says this. There's, I'm going to kind of tell you the property that's involved. If we have A times B, this is the law of exponents that this would that would work on this one. If I have multiplication inside parentheses with the exponent outside, then every factor in the parentheses would have the exponent applied to it. Okay? And so we can kind of take the 2 cubed and then V cubed on to the next step. So we have two, well, 2 squared I can just go ahead and carry out. That can be a 4. V. Okay, and then times, what, 2 cubed and then V cubed, and make yourself a little room, too. That's always good to do, especially if there's a fraction. Okay, so now we have this thing we can do. What I like to get students to do, if these really kind of get you every now and then, this, this, these types of problems, like, you get a little, like, easily confused on them. I mean, not that you don't understand them, but sometimes they're hard to organize. What you can do at this step, is you can write the numerical parts near one another, right? 2 cubed, by the way, is going to be 8. I'm going to just go ahead and put that there. But I'm putting all those things together, and then I'm going to put the V parts together, the variables, 
and by the way this is v to the first power right you can go ahead and write your one exponent if it helps you apply the uh, correct rule then write the ones if you need it okay four times eight 32 now what we're going to do here on this one v to the first power times v to the third power this is that one of the very first rules that you had it said this when you're multiplying straight across okay and we let's say x to the a times x to the b and you had the matching bases we're so multiplying straight across with matching bases what do we do with our exponents what do you do with the exponents Jose uh, you add them yes excellent so you just keep one base and just write the exponents added together and and carry on good job cool gotta check every now and then see if you're awake <laughs> yeah I'm still here <laughs> it's all good yeah I know you're a trooper that's awesome <laughs> You guys, okay, so 32V to the fourth would be this one, okay? Now, E and F is where they get a little little sticky for us, so let's let's get these challenges going. So, uh, Jose, where would you start for E? I'm just curious. What would you, you would start with the, with the exponents. You would distribute it for the two. Okay, that's okay. Yeah, you can do that totally. All right, and I would do in the same step, I would go ahead and take that division symbol and turn that into a fraction because you're going to have to deal with that as a fraction anyway. So you want to do this. You want to say two x to the fourth squared. You want to go ahead. Okay, so when it raise a power to a power, what do I do with the exponents in that case? You times them. Yeah, exactly. Multiply them. So let me give myself a little room with this. Like I said earlier, <laughs> I'm <laughs> giving myself room. Okay, so now I'm going to have x to the, is that a positive 4? Yeah. Okay, x to the 8th power and then x to the negative 3 negative times 2 is? Six, negative 6. Negative 6. Okay. And then I have all that over x squared. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's my second step. So let's go ahead and go ahead and what do we want to do now? I'm going to let you, you guide me this for this one. All right. So you would... Uh... So you would add the exponent so it would come out. Yeah, to you can X. go straight across on the numerator. Good. So we just would bring down that denominator. Square. Good. Square. Eight minus six, right? I'm going to write that in two steps just to kind of show people what we're doing. So we're adding a negative six, right? Mm -hmm. So we have, oops, excuse me, x to the second power over x to the second power. Of course, what happens here now? They both you just cross them out. Yeah, they cancel each other out, right? Because the number over itself is one, so now your answer is one. So be careful when everything cancels like that, you guys. It's not nothing. It's not zero. It's one. So when you cancel and something out, notice it. When I line through something like that, that cancels out is a one that I put there. Okay. Sometimes people get in the habit of just crossing it out and they forget about the one. So it's important to, to remember. All right, so let's check out F. Let's see what happens there, okay? So let's see. I always want to say number F, letter F. Yeah. So, okay, this is a, a thing here, okay, one-half as an exponent. So there's this rule, okay? And um, if you watch my exponent overview uh, video, you'll see a good explanation of this. When you see a fractional exponent, and I think in our homework we hear we're dealing mostly with square roots, but let's just say we have the nth root, okay? If I have the nth root of, of A, that's fine. We can write that as a fraction exponent with the n, the nth root, the index written in the denominator. And it makes sense, right? Because it's a root, and the root's underneath the ground, right? So it's a denominator. So I'm going to write a 1 in the numerator here. So notice the exponent on A is a 1, right? So we write 1 over N. But knowing that, let me kind of uh, expand this out. If I had, let me go back and put that. Okay, so if I had an M on the A as an exponent, the nth root of A to the M power, notice I would write the M up in the numerator, right? That's my exponent or my power, right? Let me just write it as the word power. 
it's easier to think of this as the power and then mm -hmm. the root is below because the exponent is the whole fraction okay cool all right thank you all right so now look again one half is going to be applied to both of those factors inside that parenthesis you want to be very careful to yeah this that rule the rule i'm doing now with the one half applied to the nine and the x only applies if it's multiplication inside the parentheses okay so it, it is so we'll say this is nine to the one half okay times x to the one half times x cubed all right okay so now we can kind of go to another step and we can say okay nine to the one half power this is just square root of nine right check this out if you kind of didn't don't know quite what to write but you know that nine is what three squared right and so we can write that multiplied times one half right okay make that a two Karen what happens here they cancel out yeah so look the square root of nine is three by itself so really this is going to be three right now I can deal with my X's now okay okay so that's kind of cool thing I mean you could always take nine to the one-half power you could rewrite it as square root of nine and write three right but the reason I'm showing you that little thing with the with the writing as a three squared to the one half power is to show you that that cancels out and to show you the people who like some people don't know what to do with that radical sign once you take the square root and a lot of times they put it back on the three you know and they'll write the answer is square root of three so what but don't do that once you take the square root of something and you say like the square root of nine is three you just write the three and leave everything else behind you keep going look forward don't look back I say it sounds kind of corny that I'm saying that but it's true <laughs> just you know keep your eyes on the on the future on the prize no but really okay. once you extract the root it's done the radical symbol is no more okay all right so let's go to this the X's here X to the one half times X cubed I'm gonna go ahead and add those now check it out so you're gonna have one half in my in the exponent too so get really get, get kind of used to writing kind of small <laughs> you can get used to writing small or you can kind of take this on the side right and you can say okay one half plus three over one and you can do your fraction operations on the side and bring it back you know what I'm saying so keep it organized okay now we need a two here so one times two three times six two. yeah so we'll have what seven halves so then of course come back into the problem you want to put that back where it goes up in that exponent so we have three X to the seven halves there's your answer this is not a hard problem but you can see all the little fraction work and all the little stuff on the side it couldn't get it can get away from you if you're not careful you need this is why you need to practice this stuff you know we were just have, talking about that I mean you guys could 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 watch some videos all day or Google the proper technique or whatnot but until you put the pencil to the page like they say the rubber to the road you're not gonna get as good as you can be you, you it's like you're given points away from tests and points is what it's all about when it comes to your final GPA so um you know all these little extra practice problems that you have at your disposal use them okay so okay let's move on from this okay any questions about this though uh, Jose anything that's fine yeah, I'm good right I'm good so far okay so let me pause and we'll set up for the next part right sounds good okay so what we're gonna do now is just a little more on the whole square roots practice and um, I uh, will have another session tomorrow and hopefully Jose will be able to attend so yeah, I'll be here. yeah great and so you guys will be maybe more people will be off of work too so I know you guys work some crazy hours I think a lot of my students have approached me uh, this in these classes and have told me about the hours they're working so this will be recorded too so I'm gonna post it on our website and you guys will be able to access that when you're um, getting off of work too
But uh, let's simplify some of these square roots problems, okay? And so um, I just kind of want to talk about that. We were looking for square root factors. Notice all these are just square roots, okay? No cubed or fourth roots or anything. So we're looking for pairs of factors, right? What you want to do here is you want to kind of um, write out the factors. For example, 63 is not a perfect square, but we know it has a perfect square factor in it, right? Like, what's a, what's some of the factors of 63? No, Jose? Uh, let's see, it would have 6, 3, 9. Yeah, 9 and what? Well, yeah, 9 and 1. 9 and what? I mean, 9 and, uh, nine and 7. Well, nine's already, 9 can already be a square root. You can already turn to 3, right. so... Okay, so, but you have to kind of include, good, that's very good. Nine, though, we have to remember nine times what is 63, though? Oh, that was a 63, what was that? Oh, I didn't say anything. So, wait. Oh. So, we have to, uh, it's nine times, yeah. <laughs> times seven. Good. So, here we go. So, we want to write the factor in, oh, not, not so terribly, but. 9 times 7, 63. So um, then we want to go ahead and, and carry out this. We want to make sure we have all our factors independent, right, written out. We want to list them all out. So we'll have an m squared and an n squared. Now, what I want to do here, and so really what I'm doing in this little, what I've written here, is kind of like not even in the problem. I guess I'm kind of trying to pull that out to the side. Okay. So what I want to go ahead and do is, I guess I could just put it there now, since I wrote it like that. What I can do here now is I can rewrite another step, okay, where I have all my perfect squared factors in the front ready to extract. Okay, now 9 is, the square root of 9 we know is what? Square root of 9 is 3, 9 is 3 squared, right? and it is 3. But look, I'm going to just write it like this first, and I'm going to write it out. I'm going to put it in another step. Okay, but I'm trying to show you all this, this uh, property of radicals where you can separate everything out into its own radical, every factor. That means multiply, right? Mm -hmm. Y'all don't forget all these things happen if it's multiplication inside. And then the square root of 7 is still in there too, right? All these things are in the house in the last step, so they all have their individual houses in the next step you see now eventually you're gonna you guys won't do all these steps I'm doing what I'm really trying to do is exhibit for you the different properties like I said this is some things that tools you can use and they'll come in handy in the future so look the square root of a 3 squared means that what comes out of there is the 3 in other words let me kind of break it down and I know y'all know this and a lot of y'all like we get it we get it but look if it's a square root here and there's a square on the number the thing that comes out is the base a lot of people do need to hear that though so the three is what comes out see that's what's left over in there okay so this is the three that's what comes out okay all right all right, that's probably the only time I'll beat that horse dead multiple times, I swear. Okay, so now square root of m squared, the m is what comes out. Okay, notice I'm not putting a radical on it. The, the radical sign's gone. Square root of n squared, the n is what comes out. And then square root of 7, what to do? There's no yeah. There's no square root, so we just leave it as is. Good job. Yeah, excellent. Yes, we leave those guys alone. You leave it just like it is. And when you have a radical factor left in, in the answer like this, you hang it off the end. Okay? So, like, you first you'll put your, your, your numbers, right, threes, twos, you know, your constant factors. And then we put our variables. Notice we did three. Then we put our m's and our n's. Then our square root is what hangs off the end. Okay? So, anyway, that's how you do these endings with, with radicals involved. So, this is your answer. All right, let's take a look at another one. Let's go to F. Okay. 
So now we want to kind of take 72, and we do have another square root factor. Again, we have a 9. And then an 8. And an 8. Cool. So what about 8? Are there, 8 has another one, too. Look at 9. Let's bring down that 9. I'm not going to do a prime factorization. I'm doing more like a square root factor. But 8 has a 4 and a 2. I'm going to show you a trick. Okay, there's a 4. So what is 9 times 4, by the way? 36. Yeah, 36 itself 30 also is a perfect square, right? So let's go ahead and we'll separate 72 into 36 and 2. Because the square root of 36 is 6, by the way. Right? You caught that? Yeah. So, yeah, if you, if you kind of see that there's a 9 and you go see the other factor and you're like, oh, wait, that has one too. You know, try grouping them together in different ways and you might discover a bigger one that you can work a little more efficient. You know, if you don't notice that, you can always extract them separately and multiply them on the front. But I'll give you, that's another example for another time. We'll do one like that. So anyway, so we're going to separate out. We're going to do this. We're going to have 36, 2, and we'll have j to the 4th, right? Mm -hmm. But j to the 4th can be written as what squared okay remember when we raised the power to a power we multiply right so what three. times two was four a two right two. okay and this is a little trick i'm showing you guys because it'll benefit you i'm going to show you guys the ease the the definition based way to do that in a minute but check this out because the square root is something squared so we're trying to say something squared right so okay this is going to be the k so what times 2 is 6? 3, right? Three. So k yeah. cubed squared. Now check it out. Let's write all these, these in there individual, like we did in that first problem. We'll write them in their individual radicals. So we'll have the square root of 36, the square root of 2, okay? Now I'm going to have the square root of j squared, squared, right? times the square root of k cubed squared. That's a, that's a, really okay. Let me fix that up. <laughs> k cubed squared. Hopefully y'all can make that out. Okay, so which of these are the perfect squares? You know, we have, let's kind of highlight those guys. So we're going to have a, this, a, that radical symbol is going to be gone. This guy's going to be taken care of because it's a, radical in a square, right? The square root and the square. Right? Remember we said we need the square root, the index, and the exponent to match. So whatever's not red highlighted there will be the answer to that part. See? So square root and a square. So the k cubed is what's going to come out of that. Y'all catching my drift on that? Mm -hmm. Got it. Good. So square root of 36, let's go to town with this one. Let's go ahead and simplify all this stuff. Square root of 36 is 6. Good. Okay. And we'll hold off on the 2. Let's go to our variables. We'll have what? J squared, right? K cubed, right? And then the square root of 2 actually gets kicked to the caboose. Poor guy. He's got to stay home. 2 has no date. All right. Okay. So that is my answer, by the way, you guys. This is it. Wait, wouldn't a k still stay under the square root sign, though? Good question. No, it wouldn't because because of the k. You got to remember this would be. Let's let's pretend k cubed instead of k cubed in the parentheses is z, mm -hmm. right? If I had, like, I'm talking about the part that's not highlighted pink. Let's pretend all that's highlighted in pink stays the same. If it's not highlighted in pink, make it a Z. Okay, mm -hmm. so like Z squared, right? Now, we said that if the index, the square root, and the exponent match, what comes out is that base, right? Or uh, this guy okay. comes out. Okay, so he gets to escape. So Z is my answer. So look, the index and the exponent match there. So what's not an index or an exponent. The base is what comes out. So k cubed gets to gets to go. So that's it. Uh, 
Yeah, I got you. Yeah, because it was inside the parentheses, right? Yeah, you got it. Okay. All right. So, um, you want to pick one? What you think and what you like on this? Let's see what problem you want to pick a hard one. Uh, say B. Which one? Or, oh, the <laughs> one on the bottom. <laughs> bottom B. Okay. The eight F squared. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Whew, I don't know. You are challenging me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, well, yeah, okay. Yeah, I am the teacher, though. I should know. I should be okay with that. <laughs> I'm just joking. Okay, you guys. So here we are. So let's take a look now. Square root. Let's, let me remind you guys of a couple of things on the right side there. Let me get rid of that, the scribble from before. I want to remind you guys of this. If you have the square root of a fraction, let's say u over v, that you just like we did with the factors, right? When we could separate each factor into its own its own radical, we can do that with a numerator and a de denominator. See that? That way we can carry out those square roots. We can extract them. Okay. So the same thing goes here. Okay. If I can't reduce the fraction, so if we're looking at b, look at eight and nine have no common factors, right? Let me enlarge that a little bit, too, so you guys can see it better. So um, 8 and 9 do not, it won't reduce, in other words, right? The number part of the fraction will not reduce. Okay? So we're over here. So uh, F and G don't have anything they can cancel with either. So what we can start doing is just kind of like look at just the numerator. You know, let's just look at this one and see what we can do, just like the problems we just finished doing. Treat the numerator like one of the previous problems, and the denominator as well. See that? And when you when you do that, you can see it becomes a little clearer what's going to happen here, okay? So, um, let me do that. Okay. All right. So, um, let me fix that. Okay. And, okay, we went a little too far with that. So now, um, let's go a step further, and we can even say the square root of 9 is now going to be what? 3. Yeah. Or yeah. That's fine. Get the denominator taken care of. And now 8, you know, the stuff we did up in the, in the first few problems on this section here, you're not going to always do that. You Eventually, once you practice that, you'll be able to look at the square root of 8 and say that that's, Two. square roots of two, right? Yeah. You're going to say, oh, I know what that is, you know. But until you do, just, you know, don't don't panic. It's not a big deal if you don't notice that. Maybe you'll just be able to do that, you know, this much. And you'll say, well, then that's two and square root of two stays. You know what I mean? Just take it bits at a time. You don't have to do a bunch of stuff in your head yet. But eventually, once you practice, you will be able to. It'll be easier, and it won't make mistakes. So now we got 2, and we have square roots of 2. I'm putting that off the back because of the F and the G. So now we have what? We have the square root of F squared and the square root of G squared. We're going to have F and G. You agree with that? Yeah. Okay. If you want to do the step that's in between, that's that's fine. You know, in between here, you could have written an extra step where you had the square root of 8, square root of f squared, square root of g squared, over square root of 9. You know, you could do that. You know, you could even go and maybe put square root of 4 times square root of 2 instead of 8. Up to you. You know, you guys, there's more than one way. Usually on any of the exponent or even the radical problems, there's going to be more than one way to do a lot of the simplifying you guys are going to be asked to do. And, uh, you know, it's not going to be as, don't panic if you see me post a solution that may be a little different. You know, or maybe I went in another direction and you went in this other direction. But we got to the same answer. No panicking allowed because there's usually, sometimes there's a lot of different ways to do one problem. So this is one of those topics where there's a lot of different ways you can handle some of these problems. Anyway, that's what I got for you, Jose. You got any other questions for me? Uh, no. I, I mean, I'm fine for now. Well, 
one more thing I'm going to mention, we can maybe pick up here tomorrow, is notice here the radical, the denominators all simplified, right? The radicals all extracted in these problems here. Like this denominator would be square root of 144 is 12. No more square root in the denominator. They are showing you that because eventually we're going to get to a point where you don't want to leave a radical in the denominator. Okay, so mm -hmm. that's another thing for another lesson in the future. So we'll get to that. So guys, we'll have an, a part two uh, tomorrow and hope you guys all have a good evening. Talk to you all soon. Good night, Jose. Thank you for coming. All right, good night. Yeah, thanks. Talk to you soon, babe. All right, see you later.